Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500. And welcome back to what's hopefully the last day on Stinky Ella. Today, we are gonna try and polish up some of those scratches. Not gonna do the ones with the paint just yet, but we're gonna start off doing that, see how it goes, polish up that front bumper, get the number plates on, um, and we'll go from there. But hopefully, the last video, and then we can get it MOT'd, get the new tires the other way around, and then a little bit of titivation to get it finished. So let's go. Come with me to Stinky Ella. Let's go. main thing apart from the bumper I mean I've got to do some paint work on the bumper as well and I have got I say I've got paint I've got paint I think I have um, the main thing that I wanted to try and polish out is these these are quite clearly dog paws dog jumping up at the window uh, these not so much these are proper scratches so I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to do the old rub down paint in rub down paint in rub down paint in and so on and so forth until we can get it hopefully good that's the plan whether it'll work remains to be seen we've got the bumper to do sort that out and uh, say to do uh, the bumper to uh, take off have a look underneath put it back hopefully close those gaps up um, still going to have a little fiddle around with the uh, with the bonnet and so on uh, to see if we can get that any better we've got to do these bits of painting on the bumper i think i just mentioned that and i'm going to polish up and try and get rid of some of the scratches that are on this bumper but i think before i do that i probably need to give it a wash don't i um because we need to uh, have a clean car to start with so i'm going to get it cleaned and then we'll come back uh, and we'll have a go at the polishing and see if we can get rid of some of those lighter scratches and then we'll touch up some of the other paintwork as well right i've done a little bit of polish um there's still a couple of little bits that are going to need touching up and that bit there i think is where it made, it's, I've made it look worse because it's got uh, polish in it. So I'll have to clean that polish out and then I'll get some paint on those little bits as well. Um, most of it's polished up fine. That bit there is obviously going to need some paint in from the spray can and they rubbing down. Um, and I've just uh, lightly rubbed down these scratches. So I'm just going to get some paint in them now. Um, what we'll probably do is leave it till tomorrow and we'll come back out polish it up or again rub it down polish it up and so on keep doing it and hopefully we can uh, we can get that to look all right otherwise it's going to have to go to get a smart repairer down to do it i don't really want to do that um, or i paint that whole so whole panel and i don't really want to do that uh, i mean obviously i'll see from when i do the bumper whether that matches or not so it wouldn't be the end of the world if i did but i'd rather not um yeah so I'm going, to, I'm going to do that bit in a minute, I think, and then I'm going to also going to go around the car and touch these bits up as well. That's that one bit there with a little dent, which I'm just going to put paint in. Um, but yeah, just needs a bit of touching up here and there, really. Um, yeah, hopefully that's going to work. Always looks awful, first of all. I'm assuming that's, I mean, that could be branches, but the bits, uh, the bits there with the dog pretty much gone now unless you look really closely there's a few little hairlines but pretty much pretty much gone probably won't attempt that any further um, so we're getting there slowly right so I've put some paint in there and uh, leveled it out with the plastic razor blade I can see there will definitely need some more it was a lot it was a lot uh, deeper there uh, so I'll leave that to dry um, I'll probably come back to it tomorrow I think and we'll give it a give it a sand down so it put, maybe put some more paint in and then uh, probably only, only a couple of goes um, apart from maybe that bit there but all this looks okay actually this bit here level I mean you know it's, whereas that you can still see the divots in that um, and then hopefully we'll be able to polish it up afterwards and it'll disappear or well, at least disappear enough to say it's okay okay I've touched up the little bits 
on here again they it just takes the eye off of them and that one it's literally just done it so it's wet still but it just takes the eye off of the little bits um, i'm gonna, just going to rub that bit down uh, and paint that as well now um, i'll do that with the spray can i have I barely got any paint left so i need to make it last right that's all rubbed down and now it's in primer i'm just waiting for that to go off for a little while then we'll block that down and um get some base coat on i hope it matches i think it is a decent match i've touched those bits in on the bonnet they seem to match all right well, not on the bonnet sorry on the bumper seems to match i think <sighs> don't know it's always difficult yeah they they seem to match once they're uh, once they've filled in a little bit more and obviously you it looks worse of course because you've got the, the the rubbed down bit surrounding it but uh yeah fingers crossed tomorrow that'll do the trick there it is finished it's a good color match it's painted and lacquered haven't polished it doesn't doesn't even really look like it needs one but we will give it a buff up tomorrow we know that this wing is different but it matches the rest of the car fine yeah really pleased with that i'm getting good at this i mean it wasn't i'm better at bumpers because the bumpers are easier to sand it's the sanding bit that does me with cars with you know with paintwork that's that's had another lot on it and it's looking much much better so i'm going to give that another sand tomorrow probably give it another little slap of paint and then we'll see about polishing it up see if it's done it but yeah starting to look good i've gone around the car i've touched in all the other little bits of paint i did actually find another another um can of paint as well which is handy so i've touched in all the bits on the back bumper as well that is a bit scratched there even though i did give that a good polish i might i might i don't know what are they 20 odd quid i was contemplating filling that in as well because that's coming off i don't know if my hand's steady enough to do that <laughs> maybe i'll have to have a beer first steady my nerves i might have a go at doing that because it's worn off isn't it i might as well do it with the same red paint i've got the fine brushes so yeah i think i might do i might do that tomorrow we'll give it a go i'll film that and you can see what how steady my hand is yeah it's really starting to take shape now i've even cleaned the dashboard believe it or not earlier that, even that's nice and clean now look it's not filthy like it was you can see it i think tomorrow i'm going to get the steam cleaner out steam clean these seats and steam clean that headliner but uh, i don't know if it's my imagination but the smell of dog seems to be diminishing. Oh, I've got to order one of them. I've probably got one. The plastic ring's broken. I, I, yeah, I don't know if I've got one or not. I might have one knocking around, but for what they cost, I think I'll order one. But yeah, it's coming along now. It's been a lot of grief, this car. Well, yeah, it has been a lot of grief. But it's really starting to take shape now. I'm getting really pleased with it. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't use it as my van. Just hope that comes out all right. But yeah, well pleased that that bumper's come out. Well pleased. Right, I think we're gonna pack up for today. It's gone five o'clock, I think. Weather seems to be on the turn yet again. Um, we'll have a little manipulate of that bonnet again tomorrow as well. I think we just need to bend over that, that edge a little bit. Try and make it a little bit better. But yeah, coming along nicely. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the morning. So it's a nice rainy day today, so we haven't been able to do anything on the car. But um, yeah, it's still raining. Uh, I managed to clean the BMW today. Uh, first time for 11 months. Um, yeah, it's still raining now, so yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do anything to this now today, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we'll come back next week. Uh, I'm back to work tomorrow, so we'll come back next week uh, and we'll carry on and we'll get some more done. Um, I've actually got an appointment this afternoon to get the new tires. So what I've done, let me just quickly show you in the rain. Show you in the rain. I found these two wheels, which um, that one's not too bad. 
that one's not brilliant but it's better than the other one that's on the car um they've been out in the garden for some time so they're in a bit of a state uh, and one of them i think this one has got water in it so i better warn them when i get there uh, but yeah so we'll have two nice brand new tires and then what we'll do is we'll put the new ones on the front and then we'll swap them over to the back the good ones that are on the front now we'll swap over to the back i think that's a good plan it's getting out the dry um so yeah so uh, and then we'll um we'll carry on next week as i say i'm going to do that roof lining and get it all steam cleaned inside we've got to paint that as well down there which i've got a gray one at the moment um what else what else what else what else service um i think i probably might book the mot as well see if i can get the mot booked for the end of next week i'm off next friday so i'm going to see if i can get it booked for next friday um, and then once, because once the tyres are on, um, it's, I think it's, I've got to adjust the mileage because we don't want the wrong mileage because it's 30 something thousand, isn't it? Because of course it's had the new um, speedo. So I just need to adjust that back to what it should be. Uh, and then we're, I think then we're ready for the MOT then after that. Um, so yeah, that'd be good. So uh, I'll see you next week, uh, obviously part of this video. Um, and we'll go from there and hopefully we can get this wrapped up and get this pretty much finished soon. Shame work gets in the way, but there you go. So we've got the new tyres. Um, haven't cleaned these wheels up at all. Um, I, did, I did warn the bloke when I got there that um, one of the tyres had a load of water in and he got a knife out and cut a hole in the tyre and drained it. And it was raining at the time, so the ground was wet, but the amount of water that came out of it, there was litres was litres of the stuff coming out of it. It was actually quite heavy. So they really need a good clean up and there will be a, a little bit of um, work needed doing on them they are called iLink never heard of them the tires that I normally get uh, were available didn't seem to be available at all can't remember the name of them now but not available so these were the most popular budget tire so that's what I've gone for uh, iLink L grip 55 similar sort of pattern to those other ones um, yeah they're new that's the main thing so I say they will go on the front and then we'll swap over the good wheels on the front to the back Right, so yeah, I've got it mixed up in this bottle, uh, sorry, three to one, I've got it mixed up, yeah, I've got, at the moment I've got 350 mil of it, so that should be more than enough to do the four wheels, so it's bright on, they are really bad these wheels, they've been stored in the garden for ages, well over a year, and they're all gone a bit crusty which will come off nicely once I've um, done this. Horrible smell, this stuff. See, in the centre there especially, it's like, almost like mould. Right, now we'll leave that to dwell for about five minutes, and then we use a detailing brush to get in all the nooks and crannies. We'll turn them back round. We'll do the fronts first. There you go, right. So, yeah, so we'll leave that for five minutes and then we'll come back. Right. and clean now 
Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll just dry them off with a cloth um, and then what we'll do is uh, I'll do the other one which is over there. Um, as I say, we've got to do under here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use citrus pre-wash under there. That's what I've used before. Let that dwell for about 10 minutes. Really give it a good soaking. Uh, and then jet wash all that off. And uh, that's what I do on all the cars now. It just, when you look at those brakes, like I, only did, I did those 10 days ago. And they're already starting to uh, get surface rust on them. Amazing. Anyway, uh, I'll come back in a minute when I, when I do this. Right, citrus wash, nothing scientific about the measurement in there. Just a, a good old splodge and then topped up with water. I've got these on Amazon, I think they're really good. I've got another one of them that I've never used, but give it a really good squirt. I could use snow foam under here, but I think this is sufficient. I'll just leave it to dwell. I mean, the power of the jet wash does most of it. Just nice to get them all nice and clean. All right, that's that one. And then we need to get the back wheel off and do the same on that one. It's the first time I've had this wheel off, actually. They, uh, the, the shock absorbers, um, I mean, the, the rubbers look okay. Excuse me, the bushes look okay, but they're not the best. I don't think there's any knocking. You know what, they even look like the originals. Can't, they can't be the originals, can they? can't be. I'm going to give the springs a bit of a squirt as well here yeah, because I like to clean those up because they will often come up as uh, corroded on the uh, MOT as an advisory so I feel if you clean them up they're less likely to do that. Right that's that. So we'll let that dwell for a little bit along with the front one and then we'll blast that off. Right that's been dwelling for some time. nice and clean under there now. Again we'll let that drip off for a while and then we'll go over that with a cloth. It's a little bit nicer presented for the MOT tester isn't it? Although it might give away things that they might not have otherwise seen. <laughs> There's always that danger of course. Right, um, yeah. Okay, that's, uh, that's all good. Let's do the back now. Right, I wanted to wire brush actually as well under here. But yeah, there's some flaking paint on the uh, springs. But I am going to wire brush them as well. But I'll just do this first. Nice and clean. Again, that helps um, clean up the shocks as well. Yeah, I think I think that bush is okay. Only time will tell. But yeah, I'm going to give the. Uh, I'm not going to get under it now. I'm going to go up on ramps afterwards once I've done these tyres, um, because obviously we're only up on a jack at the moment. Um, so we'll get. Um, yeah, we'll get it up on ramps because uh, I, I, I'm not even sure. I've had this. I've had this car I think since January, and it's now <coughs> it's now middle of June almost. Um, and I, I know if I have been underneath and had a look at the rear beam, I don't remember what it's like. I, I don't actually recall doing that. Because um, that's, yeah, I suppose, no, it's not, I was going to say it's normally something I do at the end, but it's not, not particularly, but yeah, it's, um, 
Yeah, looks all right, actually. Right, uh, I'm going to get these wheels on, and then we'll go around to the other side, and we'll do the other side. So I won't bother filming all of it, but um, we'll come back afterwards. And then once we've done that, we can, um, we can get it up in the air, up on the ramps, and we'll have a, little good, we'll have a good look underneath. So I'll, I'll see you uh, on the other side of doing these wheels. There we go, done. All nice and clean under there and uh, all new tyres on. Uh, obviously, I, w I do need to tart these wheels up, uh, and I will do that maybe this afternoon, maybe next week, not sure. But yeah, so swap the fronts for the backs, put the new fronts on, and these are the old uh, backs. As you can see, this one is all cracked along there, and the tread at the edge isn't very good. And that one, oh no, that's the outside edge. Yeah, again, not the best. Um, so they will go on my pile, I haven't bothered cleaning them, they will go on my pile um, behind the garage and then at some point um, when I get another one of these and I need some new tyres, um, it, sa it saves me having to leave the car out, either take the car in or uh, put the car up on, um, on stands to take the wheels in. It's just more convenient really, so uh, that's what I'll do again. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, when I got the Locking wheel nut key out, I noticed something. Remember we got the smell in here still. Look in there, look. Dog hair. So I think, I mean this one I can get to obviously because the seat flips up, but I think I'll take that driver's seat out again. And um, turn it upside down. Because of course normally you don't turn the seats upside down, you don't see that. But that bloody dog hair is literally everywhere in this car, so that certainly wouldn't help. With the smell um obviously i am going to do the pollen filter on here and i'm dreading it i'm absolutely dreading it i have done it once before uh, luckily for me on that occasion uh it only only had one bolt in it whoever had done it before just put one bolt back in it which is probably what i'll do as well um because there are two i will do my utmost to film uh, and i'll probably do a separate video on it there are videos already out there but you know be nice to keep them all in one place um, oh, just noticed that door card's not on properly. Why is that then? Yeah, another thing I've got to do on here, which I only just remembered about, is that the mileage. I've got to adjust the mileage on this before the MOT because it's still set to um, it's still set to the new speedo. So before it goes for MOT, I've got to do that. Otherwise, obviously, it'll come up with a mileage discrepancy, and we don't want that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get the Hoover out and get that out. Uh, someone in one of the la in the last video said maybe I should think again about steam cleaning the headlining, um, and I said I agreed actually and said because what they said was you might do something about you know the glue you might compromise the glue or words to that effect. Now I sort of agreed at the time, thinking yeah the um, the roof lining is sort of like on the reverse of it. It's like fiberglass which is all glued together, obviously to form the shape. Um, and I don't know whether they meant that or whether they thought that the headlining in this is actually glued to the roof. In these, it's not. It's just held in by poppers and screws. It's not actually glued to the, to the uh, roof, which it is in some cars. So I'm not sure what they were referring to then. So I've taken that on board, but I need to do it. So I am going to do it. I'll do it lightly. I won't go mad with it. Um, yeah. I did see some people mentioning some sort of uh, jollop that you can buy on Amazon, but it was um, it was American jollop and it's not available here. There must be stuff, some sort of enzyme killer. I mean, I've got enzyme killer for mold and that, but it's not a, it's not. I don't think it's the right sort of thing. Uh, I still got to do that, which I have bought some paint for, which someone suggested, but I still haven't looked in the loft to see if I've actually got one. Uh, and I've also before the MOT, not that I don't think it will affect the MOT, but I've also got to um, put that on. I've just got a glue and um, glue and screw. Actually, I might just screw it. Don't necessarily need glue and screw. Uh, yeah, and then I think, apart from testing the lights and what have you, which I think are all okay. Right, okay, so um, I'm just gonna go around the car and make sure everything works. Squirters work. Yeah, wipers work. There are no splits in them, I will inspect them. I think I've already done that. Lights. DRLs aren't part of the uh, MOT anyway, but I like to make sure they're both working, which they are. So if we put the lights on, the DRL should go dim. 
and both headlights should hopefully work, which they do. Wonderful. Uh, full beam. Yeah, both working, which is good. Make sure the uh, both rear lights are on. Yeah. I will put a bit of wood under the um, brake pedal. Indicator. Repeater's working. Front is working. Back is working. Other side. Back is working. Repeater's working. And the front is working. Right, that all looks good. So I'm just going to... Uh, Stick a bit of wood under and test the brake pedal, make sure the brake lights are coming on. I'm sure there'd be a, a light up if there wasn't, but um, obviously we'll switch it off for that. Um, what else? What else? What else? I've checked everything under the bonnet. That's all okay. Battery wasn't secured. I forgot to put the bolt back, so I've done that. Uh, everything in car. I'll have to take the um, air freshener down and put it on the gear stick, just in case the MOTs have a hissy fit with that. All they'll do is remove it, of course, but they'll sometimes put a fail and say removed, which you don't want particularly. Um, I have got one of these. I can't remember aircon clean. I might use that as well. I can't remember if the aircon work. I can't remember if I changed the condenser in this. I think I did. Yes, I did, of course, because I had those pipes open to the world, didn't I? And one of the subscribers told me not to. Uh, so that needs topping up. So I'll get that done with my normal fellow. I won't get uh, quick fit to do it. They, they were quite expensive. It's like 75 quid and I normally pay 30. So yeah, I'll get my normal fellow. There's no massive rush. Uh, once I've done that, I'll then use this as well to give it a good go. But of course we are going to do the filter, the pollen filter, which I'm dreading, which I might do this afternoon. I might do it this afternoon. I don't know. See how I feel. Uh, and obviously we've still got to get do this back bumper as well, have a look at that. Um, so I am just going to get it up on ramps. And I just want to have a little look um, at those. Uh, and, and, and I have wiped the springs over as much as I can when I change the tyres, change the wheels over. But uh, I just want to make sure that they're as clean as they can be. And potentially maybe uh, wire brush the... Uh, I'm not going to spray it yet. I probably will spray it, but not just now, seeing as the MOT is in less than an hour. Um, so I'm quickly going to do that and uh yeah give it a wire brush if necessary i'll show you once i get under there i'll get the camera under there fingers crossed i'm not expecting anything particularly shocks look oh yeah i'm gonna go up on ramps aren't i shocks will look okay springs look okay there's nothing that i can think of that will make it fail but you just never know do you so i will be back this afternoon once i'm back from the mot fingers crossed we get a pass and i'll see you in a few hours right we are back from the MOT and we have the MOT certificate on the dashboard here, oh, on the dashboard, <laughs> on the bonnet. And we have a pass with no advisories, a pass with no advisories. How cool is that? Excellent stuff. So that is really good news. I think it's quite a while since I've actually had her an MOT that hasn't had any advisories. Um, there is one thing that, I mean, bearing in mind that actually driving this down the mile and a half or so to the MOT centre is that actually the first time I've driven this car. Uh, bearing in mind I got this car in January and it's languished on the drive most of that time. We've done the work on it. It's then languished on the drive for weeks on end. Um, and then eventually we've sort of got to the, the point where we are now. Uh, and uh, during none of that time as I, have I actually driven it on the road until today, um, which was a bit daft really, but then it was out of MOT. So obviously I can't drive it legally on the road if it's got no MOT, unless you're going to a pre-booked uh, MOT, of course, of which I was today. Um, so the only thing that came to my head as I was driving it, was there's a bit of a clonk from the back. Now I thought to myself, is it going to fail the MOT on the uh, on the shock absorbers? Now the rear shock absorbers, don't, the bushes are not are not gone as far as I can see, but there was a de definite 
clonk. If you go over, if you go over um, speed bumps, nothing. If you go over a little bit of uneven road, it does. It, it does. It's not a lot, and I didn't have any music going or anything like that. But it's not a lot, but it is there. So assuming it's not the exhaust, and I, when I looked underneath earlier, the exhaust is, is nowhere near the bottom of the car like it was in the previous one. So I don't think it's that. Um, so I think as I've got some shock absorbers and it's like 35 quid for the pair and about half hour, 40 minutes to do it, I thought I might give it a go. I might change them. Yeah, I think I probably will. I'll drive it about a little bit more, but I think I think I probably will. Unless it, I mean, I'll check in the boot, make sure that the uh, the toolkit and the spare wheel and that is all uh, secured down properly, which I think it is, just in case it's that that's moving around. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I might as well change them. But yeah, I'm well pleased that uh, there are no no advisories. So we know that we uh, I bought some gear knobs, so I'm going to replace this gear knob. I could probably get away without replacing it, but the the silverings coming off just there. I've got some, I think they're black ones, which I bought from uh, eBay. Um, but all you have to do is, or was it Alex? Sorry, AliExpress. And I bought them before off AliExpress, and the actual, it can, you get the whole thing, including this black plastic bit underneath. Now, for some reason, the ones I bought in the past, that black plastic bit doesn't fit. And I don't know why it doesn't fit, but it doesn't. But of course, you don't need that bit. You need that bit, and you need the silver bit. So, I mean, it's loose anyway. Um, so I'm going to change that. Now, what I noticed today is, look, that, that's gone as well. So someone's been changing gear, holding it like that, with probably rings on. It's quite sharp, actually. So that tube, I think I may have one. I'm not sure. I need to go through all my spares. I think I've got one. Unless I've used it before, which I may have done, then I haven't got it. But I know I definitely have one. If not, I'll buy one. Um, I've got one of these. This came in the week. So I'll do all three of those bits. At the same time obviously so i will double i will have a look before i start it make sure i've got a tube because there's no point doing it and then have to redo it um so yeah so that's one thing that's got to be done right uh, as you know uh, the mileage uh needs to be adjusted uh, i keep forgetting to do this um obviously mot day today um i need to um i need to do this so i'm going to do it now uh something i forgot to mention earlier as well is you know i've replaced the blue and me or uh, repaired the blue and me i should say um my mileage is flashing again for some reason uh, as far as i know i did the proxy no i didn't need to do the proxy alignment because i repaired it myself didn't i so uh, i'm hoping it's not gone again because if it is it's the only one that i've ever repaired that's gone again <laughs> i suppose that's if that is the case and it's lucky that it's me um i've forgotten how you do it where you do the mileage now is it in the dashboard uh, i can't remember no body computer body computer i think it's under adjustments in there i believe um obviously we'll uh, we'll see why it's flashing as well whilst we're doing this uh adjustments uh oh it's not in there where is it then i can't think where it is or is it under the proxy alignment procedure let me check on there maybe it is i do hope it's not i don't want to have to take the bloody thing out again that would be really annoying Come on. Talk amongst yourselves. Dashboard, no, failed adjustments. Where is it? I can't remember where it is. I know you're all shouting at me, telling me where it is. I should have used my other bit of kit. I'm going up with the mileage. Obviously, that's why I'm only using this and not the other bit of kit. Uh, the XTOR. No communication with airbag control unit. Intermittent. Oh, we don't want that. Get rid of that. It, clear errors. I've not seen that one before adjustments right odometer here we go right i've just looked at um what i mean the car's not been anywhere since i've bought it literally nowhere uh, so i'm gonna enter the mileage that it was when i was uh, when it was at uh, copart i've just gone on logged into my account to have a look uh, and it was 71771 and at the moment it says 36970 right okay so what we want to do execute that uh, please press da -da -dum. so 36.963 so it's uh, 9.63 so it's 7 miles lower than what the actual mileage is so we are going to set it to 7 uh, what was it? 1 
71,000, oops, 71,700. So if we go seven lower, uh, that will be 64. 64. This isn't an exact science because it does seem to vary. So 71,764. Okay, get ready to press OK and watch. Watch it change. There you go. 71,778. <laughs> Seven miles higher than it was. So that'll do. That'll do. So as we know, we could do that in the other machine, in the other using the other machine and put it down to, to zero even and then go back up again. That does actually work. So if you use the X tool to go down, uh, sorry, to go up, and then you made a mistake, you can actually put it to zero and then use multi ECU scan to put it back up again. Or you know, any number you want. It always does this seatbelt thing for some reason when you do this, don't know why. Right, we'll disconnect that. I am I wish it would shut up though. It does stop eventually. Uh, I'm now going to connect to the Blue and Me and hope and pray that it's actually going to connect to it. Will you be quiet? Well, it has connected to it. No fault code, so it's not the Blue and Me that's causing that. It might be that airbag thing. We'll do a proxy alignment again, which we have to do anyway, because we've... Oh my God, that noise. <laughs> uh, because we've done the... Um, Connect. Yes. Shut up. All right, hopefully this will work. Uh, dashboard no fouled. Adjustment. It could be that, I suppose. Execute. Yes. I think probably if I turn the uh, ignition off and back on again, it would... Um, it would be okay. Oh, it stopped now. That's because I'm doing the proxy alignment. Thank God for that. It's like an alarm going off. You know, a burglar alarm or car alarm going off. Really annoying. Hopefully this will do the trick. At least it's not the, uh, it's not the blue and me. Well, hopefully it's not the airbag module either. Success. Whew. <laughs> Should work then. Telematics, which is obviously the blue and me. Which we know is okay. Success. Ah, this this should work now. This I think that's the last one, isn't it? Completed. Yeah. Press Y to continue. There we go. Right. Switch off. And then when we come back on, let's just close the door. It should stop flashing. And sometimes it takes a minute. If it still flashes, then I'll just have to do it again. Yeah. Seems to be all right. Good. That's what we like to see. Don't know why it did it, but there you go. One of those things. Right, let's get underneath and have a look. Put the camera down a minute. Right. Pick the camera up. That's not too bad, actually. Pretty good. I'll give those a bit, a bit more of a clean. The exhaust is good. There's nothing... Uh, Nothing going on there. Now this has got one of the exhausts there where it joins there. I've never understood why some of them are like that. It's very rarely you get the ones that are like that, that join them. Usually they join over there. It is really unusual. And I have actually got one of these as well, which I took off of um, Project Cooey. For those of you who uh, have been with me a long time, you'll remember Project Cooey. Um, but yeah, we'll give this a brush just to get the crap off. So that water there, I think is probably dripping out of the exhaust which they may pick up on at the MOT, although it's cause the car's been sitting around and it's been raining and I've washed it and so on and so forth. So it probably uh, might dry off by the time I get there. But yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's not too bad at all, actually. I don't, I'd even go as far to say as that's not the original. Is it's too clean. Oh, look at that, that bloody bracket again, I've just noticed has broken off. Another one. That's two of the damn things that are broken off. Now they didn't notice that before, so I'm going to take that bracket off because I don't want them to notice it again. <laughs> I've never had that on a car before, and now I've had it on two in a row. Bloody hell, what's the other side like? I can't see from here, I think the other side's gone as well. Unbelievable. 
I think what we'd end up doing with that, I think, I was talking about welding, wasn't I? But I think if we had to, I think what I'd probably do is um, I might even drill it and um, and put, um, what do you call them, uh, rivets in. Might do that, potentially, if need be. Yeah, that's really surprising. Never had that before in a car and I've had it two in a row. How weird. Let me have a look at the other side properly. Yeah, that one's gone as well. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. So I'm going to take those off. Huh. But they didn't pick up on it on the last MOT, so I'm hoping they don't on this one. But no, this uh, was a little bit crusty under there, but we'll say we'll give that a good brush. But apart from that, it's all right. I don't know if you can see. Let me try it. Make sure we're not zoomed in. No, go the wrong way. No. Uh, yeah, looks all right. Sorry about the camera work, but... I can't believe that. Two in a row. Never had it before. Unless, well, I say that, I don't necessarily always climb under the car like this. Maybe they have gone before and I've just never noticed them. Looking at these two, look, look where they've snapped. So that one snapped at the bolt area, or whatever, not bolt, I don't know what it is. And that one snapped there. So, um, yeah. They could be welded back on or they could be uh, drilled. Well, that one doesn't need drilling. Um, another hole drilled and they could be um, put back on with uh, rivets, I suppose, if need be. But I'm going to keep them, same as I kept the one off the other car, just in case. But they're not hanging down, actually. They're quite tall. They're not in the way. The exhaust hangs lower. So I don't think it's an issue. So I reckon that I've never noticed, I've just never noticed this before. I reckon this is probably every car like this. So if you've got one of these, have a look. Especially if it's, you know, 10 years old like this one, but wouldn't be at all surprised if they go much, much sooner than that. So I suppose it's relatively thin, isn't it? I mean, bearing in mind where it is. And probably under tension as well, but it always, they always go in the same place. So we're gonna end this here. Otherwise, it's gonna get a little bit too long. And I think we'll have one more video, I reckon. Shock absorbers, paintwork, gear stick. We've done our proxy alignment, that's all, all fine now. Uh, taking that back bumper off and having a look under there and trying to put it back on, and a service. Not doing the cam belt, because that's already been done. Uh, we don't know when, but we'll obviously track that down. Um, but yeah, it's probably not been done that long ago. So that is it for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, leave your comments and I will respond to all the comments you put. If it doesn't need a response, I just tick the old heart thing so it shows you that I've read it. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's it for the time being, yeah. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, hit the button, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and share, share, share the video. It really helps with the algorithms. But please subscribe. Still less than 50% of you are subscribers. I don't know why, maybe some people just dip in and out, but it really helps if you subscribe to the channel. So that's it, yeah, until the next one, as always, thanks for watching, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.